we have a hollow cylinder it's a conductor and we want to calculate the resistance of this conductor if you apply the potential difference uh, between the inner surface and the outer surface so uh, when you apply a potential difference of course the current will flow in the direction of uh, the maximum change of potential so um, when you apply this potential difference the current will flow from the inner surface okay toward the outer surface in the radial direction so that means we have a radial current and when the, this current uh, flows the current will flow through a cross-section area which is in the uh, uh, shape of a cylinder and this cross-section uh, area is just the uh, side area of a cylinder okay and of course the cross-section will change because when you go from from uh, uh, inner surface to the outer the radius will change that means the circumference of uh, the uh, uh, cylinder that the current will flow is changed and then uh, this will change the cross-section area so we have a change in cross-section area in that case of course it's not very simple to uh, write down the resistance just uh, in the general formula rho times L divided by the cross-section area but the total uh, length of the uh, uh, or total the height of the uh, the uh, hollow cylinder is L given but the thing is you just uh, be careful the current is not flowing from this side to the other end of the cylinder in this direction okay uh, it's not the case but the thing is the current is flowing through uh, from the inner surface to the, toward the outer surface in this radial direction let's picture this in this uh, better picture the cross section so we have the inner radius of this hollow cylinder as a and the outer radius is b so the thickness of the conductor is b minus a okay so that means the length of the conductor that the current flows is b minus a but of course the the cross section area is changing so one way to think uh, to calculate this uh, resistance is again to uh, uh, Imagine this uh, hollow cylinder as the sum of uh, cylinders which has thicknesses dr running from r is equal to a to r is equal to b. So when you think this, for example, the darker region, uh, this is a, a, a cylindrical shell which has the thickness dr and if you Think that the current is flowing from the inner surface of this shell toward the outer surface then in that case the length of the conductor the shell will be dr okay and what about the cross section the cross section will be the circumference of this uh, cylinder okay uh, times the height of the cylinder which is L and L is fixed for all uh, of these uh, cylindrical shells which are running from the inner surface to the outer surface and if we can express the resistance of these shells then uh, the total resistance of this hollow cylinder will be just the sum of all these resistances of the cylindrical shells and one of these, uh, well, uh, we will call the uh, resistance of these uh, shells as dr, and uh, when you get when you uh, uh, take the integral of these uh, resistances, then you will find the total resistance of this hollow cylinder from the inner surface to the outer surface. So, when we apply the potential difference from uh, uh, between the inner surface and the uh, uh, outer surface, since the surface uh, we'll have the uh, uh, constant we'll have all over the surface we have we will have the constant potential and then in that case the current will flow in the radial direction in in the uh, uh, direction of these arrows okay so 
uh, the resistivity of, of the uh, uh, material is fixed and it is rho. Uh, so the general expression for uh, the resistance is just L divided by A. L is the uh, radial thickness in that case. And of course, the uh, uh, since the cross-section is changing, then we express, as I said previously, the uh, uh, resistance of this one of these uh, infinitesimally uh, small thickness cylindrical shells uh, as dr. So it will be, uh, well, the length of the uh, conductor in that case for this uh, shell is dr. So we put dr in here. And the surface area will be just the circumference of this ring 2 pi r times the height of the cylinder. L. So this is the side surface area of a cylinder. Then uh, we already expressed every uh, thing in this expression dr in terms of the one in terms of one variable r. Okay, and this r is the radius of these cylindrical shells. So I think we are ready now to take the integral of these uh, infinitesimal resistances to, to find the finite resistance of this uh, hollow cylinder and just take the integral but what about the limits of the integration since uh, the inner surface is at r is equal to a and the outer surface is at r is equal to b then the limits of the integration is will be from a to b and uh, everything else apart from dr divided by r is constant you can take the all uh, these terms draw l and 2 pi outside the integral and the result is simple because the r over r integral is just uh, the natural logarithm. I mean, if we put the limits of the integration, then you will get this final expression for the total resistance of this cylindrical hollow from the inner surface to the outer surface. Well, if you ask another question concerning the same uh, hollow cylinder, if you apply the potential difference between this surface and the uh, uh, this surface which is in the direction of the uh, uh, symmetry axis of the cylinder then it is very easy because the cross-section area never changes and the cross-section area is just uh, the area of this annulus and it's just pi b squared uh, minus a square pi times b square minus a, a square uh, this will be replaced by a and the total length because the current in that case flowing from this side to the other side in the direction of uh, height or l the total length will be replaced by this capital L and rho times capital L divided by pi times in parentheses b square minus a square will be the resistance if the current flows in this direction of course, this is another another problem, and, and the problem changes when you think the current flows from the inner surface to the outer surface.